In this video, I am gonna tell you why content creator and pride win tier list is wrong. Make sure to watch the video until the end to understand my take. Before we start, if you are new, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, put a like and comment down below which character you think is underrated. Let's begin. Just a small note, I don't hate any content creator or pride win. I can understand them that they wanna help out people and make things easier for them to choose. Okay, first reason is because the game just released. It's been like almost 3 weeks the game released. And you can't just make a tier list like that without understanding a character. When a game release, those characters at the beginning may look tempting, but we don't know anything about them. And and we try to learn about them, especially that we are in the end game. I will talk about the game as my second reason, so in general, I think it's a bad idea to make a tier list when we are discovering a game and we don't know much about it. After all, you can't judge a book by its cover. The second reason is the end game. Like I said, the game just released and no one reached the end game. What I meant is no one reached the max character level, which is level 80 to level 90 is, and I think you should not judge a character by its cover, especially when it's not fully built and not at max level. A character potential is better at maximum level, and I know that you guys know that. Besides, who the hell even reached to level 60 in you to be able to max out a character anyway? It's far away, and I doubt people are in that union level as for now. Third reason is the 4 star character are as good as a 5 star character in Weather and Wave. Look, every 4 star character feels like you are playing a 5 star character. And it feels like rarity in this game doesn't exist because of how good the 4 star characters are. Here an example, people say Sixia is an ember of Weather and Wave, but that is false. She is super good, especially her constellation. She has very unique gameplay and unique way to play her and that what make her good. Each character have a unique role to play and different play style. Kiro Dev made Wuwa a skill based game and made all foster characters have different value based on who is piloting them. The fourth reason is skill. Look, Weather and Wave is not an easy game like Genshin Impact. Weather and Wave feel kinda like Elden Ring and wanna know what both have in common? They both rely on player skill to learn the boss mechanic, have a good reaction time. So basically, dodge parry attack. So at the end of the day, the meta or tier list doesn't matter. What matters is your skill. Weather in Wave relies on skill quite a lot of the time. If you feel that you will be punished by a lot. Yes, some character may help you out, but overall you need to sharpen your skill. When your skill is very good then tier list won't be necessary. After all, Weather in Wave was meant to be a hardcore combat gameplay and relies on your skill, not rely on the character at all. At the end of the day, it's best to just ignore the tier list and go for what you like because this is the healthiest way to enjoy the game and try the other character too. Who know, you might like their game style. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much for listening to me until the end. If you did enjoy this type of content, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, put a like and comment down below what do you think of my take. Don't forget to follow me on twitch.tv slash We will see you next time. Bye bye.